Help us put into context the weaknesses that cities like Los Angeles face. Our guest is former FBI agent Manny Gomez, president of MG Security Services. He is also a former NYPD sergeant, Marine, and an attorney. And I already feel safer just because you're sitting here at the table. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome much. to the show. So let's Thank just you. go with the foregone conclusion that sure. $60 million is not enough. Yes. So when you have an amount that's really not enough for a city as widespread as LA, where do you allocate the expenses? What are the priorities? Well, your first priority is going to be technology. Uh, more cameras, more resources to uh, snoop out any NBC, nuclear, bio biological, or chemical weapons. Uh, that's the move now to be able to detect uh, before any of these uh, weapons of mass destruction, if you will, could even potentially be there to act as a deterrent. Dogs that sniff it helicopters that are able to detect uh, radio, radiological material from high above the sky. That's where your uh, technology dollar goes to. Also augmented in that is your jo Joint Terrorist Task Force, uh, which is uh, your federal, state, and local police departments and federal authorities working together. Uh, that also takes money and resources, more cars, more equipment, uh, overtime perhaps. Uh, so all this, this budget allocation uh, needs to be provided in order to enhance the security and protection that uh, L.A. currently has. You know, I'm just wondering, is it that, you know, L L.A. really has not seemed to be an attack, a, a, a target, although there might have been some attempts that we don't know about that were thwarted, uh, but is there a feeling that it can't happen there because it hasn't happened there? Well, if we look at just most recently Boston, Boston didn't seem to be on anybody's radar, and yet is the largest attack since 9-11. Uh, so we have to understand that it's not just the international uh, organizations, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, et cetera, that are targeting us. Now it's local. Uh, Boston was homegrown. They targeted Boston because they understood, they knew, they were familiar with the Boston area. L.A., there could potentially be a similar situation where you have the lone wolf individual or individuals that are from the area and want to... Uh, perform some sort of terroristic act and they will feel more familiar and thus act within the LA region. Many, I'm wondering when those funds, those federal funds are allocated to various cities, where it's, whether it's LA, New York, so on and so forth, is there any kind of uh, requirement that the funds be allocated to a certain type of technology? For example, um, or I guess the question is, what kind of latitude does the local law enforcement have in using the funds in the way that they best see fit for their immediate circumstance? That's a very good question. Usually uh, in, in these situations, the agency requests funds from the federal government and says specifically for what so that they could form a budget and the federal government then okays it and distributes the funds to the agency, whether it's local or state or, or, or even federal for that matter. Uh, so they usually tell the authorities we want at these type of cameras, this is the, the, the lot cost item, uh, we want these dogs, these aviation resources, et cetera, or even a, a, an item as overtime. We're, we're expecting X million of dollars in overtime because of these events that are up and coming. You know what, you, we, we established at the very top that $60 million is probably not enough. How much would be enough to properly prepare them for an attack? To begin, uh, uh, easily $100 million uh, to put in the camera resources, the, the most sophisticated resources that are out. And as we all know, technology, uh, today's technology is yesterday's dinosaur. Mm -hmm. So the minute something new comes out, something newer comes out the next day. So it, it, we always have to keep up because one thing we know for sure is every step that we take, they're, they're studying us, they're studying our tactics and trying to adapt and overcome. One of the elements that really helped in apprehending the bombing sus suspects in Boston was their proliferation of those CCTs, those closed circuit right. televisions that were everywhere, or the cameras rather, that were everywhere. Does LA have a similar grid? They don't as of yet. Uh, the, the unique thing about L.A. is that, yes, it's the second largest city by population, et cetera, but they're so spread out that it's kind of difficult to put cameras everywhere that you have massive populations. Uh, I have every confidence that, especially now after Boston, uh, we are learning from that experience and getting better, and L.A. will adapt and will put more technology into their infrastructure. And, and, and even if they were to, you know, blanket the city with cameras, that would still be reactionary. That's not necessarily preventing uh, the attack from occurring. A hundred percent. 
to be proactive the way it's done now, we infiltrate these people. We get in and we try to find out exactly what they're planning, if it's a hoax, if it's just somebody that's just, uh, you know, out of their mind or something like that. But we try to find out exactly if the person is an actual threat, penetrate them, and then take it to the very level where they think they're blowing up an, uh, an explosive device, as was done in New York with the Federal Reserve. Uh, and that way, we pre A, prevent the attack from happening, and B, be able to learn how the attack was going to happen in order to prevent the next one and to prosecute the, the individual properly. I don't know if this is a reassuring thing or a scary thing, but isn't the truth is no matter how much money we spend on protecting ourselves, preparing ourselves, trying to infiltrate these cells, it really does come down to public vigilance, doesn't it? A thousand percent. Uh, the, the move has been since 9-11, and you hear it all the time, if you see something, say something. It's as simple and as complicated as that. Mm -hmm. If we just look at Boston, if somebody would have just asked, hey, who, who does that bag belong to uh, a, a minute or two before the, the device went off, that could have been prevented. If somebody would have said, uh, does that belong to you? No. Does it belong to anybody? No. Okay, everybody back off, call the cop, mm -hmm. let the cop. Uh, figure it out and let the authorities uh, take care of action. So we need to be very vigilant. Uh, unfortunately, it's the era we live in, right? Yeah. We have to be very vigilant and we have to uh, be aware. We're in a society that we're always texting and calling and listening to music as we're walking down the street, crossing the street, etc. We really have to be vigilant and be aware of uh, packages that are left uh, by themselves. Uh, Which is a huge shift in attitude and perception and culture. Absolutely, as well. but. It's a survival skill that we need to learn. Other countries have adopted it. We need to adopt it here. Yeah, yeah, it is a sign of the time, sad or not. Manny, thank you very much. Thank you for Appreciate your time. having you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me.